here you're coming through on your last pass, literally your last pass to go into the overhead yep. and uh, and do what we call the breakout and land. Yep. And so you were uh, you were telling me you were uh, you were in the middle of an echelon move. So which is um, for the for the sake of our audience, as you're in the turn and you're going to the breakout, the lead has moved you to the other side of the formation. That's right. Yep. So you're moving from the left side. You're in this move to the right side of the formation in the number three position, and then. Well, obviously, there's a certain amount of uh, throttle movement to stabilize in the formation. And as I was pulling up next to the number two airplane, the engine quit. And then it started again. So I think, like, well, it must have been something. So I started to move back up again, move the throttle again, it quit again. But this time for a lot longer. And I realized pretty much at that point, hey, you're going to have to deal with this. So I'm now kind of regressing to um, patterns of behavior which I've been grained over, over years. Yeah. So I'm getting the airplane at the right speed, I crank the canopy open because obviously I don't want the canopy shutting me if I'm going to put the airplane down. And I'm thinking, okay, this is not my best day, but I'm actually in a good position. I'm in a low key position for a good field. And then the engine starts again. Mm. This is not an engine failure. This is a intermittent partial engine failure. Yeah, and yeah. I think, you know, we talked about this, this is probably much more dangerous than a straight engine quitting. Yeah. I was maybe at four or 500 feet, 150 miles an hour with the engine running kind of intermittently. And I've got maybe, I've got to go sort of down the second half of the downwind leg. I've got to turn base, base to final. But I'm thinking, hey, I might be able to make this. And then I made another mistake. Mm. At that point, the tower, I could see they'd heard my call. I was kind of approaching base leg and they started to shout at me, your gear's not down, your gear's not down. So I put the gear down. Yeah. At which point the engine started to run down again. So mm -hmm. I've now got drag. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, got a, I've got 180 degrees of turn to go and that was a dumb thing to do. Clearly it's going to be an off airport air landing. Pulled the gear up, dumped it right, remaining flat, rolled the wings level and continued to fly. This is the key thing, Richard. Fly the airplane as far into the crash as you can, and that's kind of in the back of my head. Three's down and safe. It was a nice thought. Unfortunately, the antenna's under the wing, and that was snapped off somewhere back in the wreckage trail, <laughs> yeah. so they didn't hear it. Yeah. But okay. you know, I'm, I'm thinking of my buddies. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good thing to think about. You wrote a great article, uh, Mark, that you shared with me on it, and in that you sort of summarized the things that you were happy with of how you did and the things that you would do differently. And the first thing is, I just appreciated that that's the way you think, that you come out of this thing and, and you were able to save yourself and cause no damage to any other people, the airplane will be fixed, and yet, just talking through you, I can still three, see you thinking through the next time this happens, this is what I would do differently, which to me, is such an important piece of our culture in aviation. That's how we get safer and safer. We're not sure. afraid to put it on the table and say, these were the facts. This is what I would do differently if I could do it again.